as far as my pharmacy career goes, I um, I was doing oncology since like 2006 at the same hospital in New York Presbyterian. At the tail end of, of RMD school, I needed to set myself up to be available for rotation. Really enjoy nuclear pharmacy. So as a fluke, I mentioned it to someone at the, at the chemo pharmacy and they're like, you know, they're looking for a nuclear pharmacist in the in the radiology department. I jumped and grabbed that position because it gave me, it freed me up for um, the rotation part, the clinical. And then I just stayed there. I, I really do enjoy it. That's what made me move to New York so long ago. We ordered doses from one of the one of the companies outside of the city, and they're calibrated for certain times of day based on when the patient comes in. My job is to make sure that the test that they're doing for the patient matches the drug that's written, you know, same like prescription matching. And then I have to calibrate the dose to be a certain amount of radiation based on the time the patient actually comes in. They, as a kid, I remember my mom going to the pharmacist more than taking me to a doctor. And she developed a special relationship with the pharmacist in, my, in the neighborhood where I lived. And I felt, I remember feeling better because he made me feel better. Even with him suggesting things over the counter, I just have a memory as a child of feeling better because the pharmacy guy told my mom what to get for me and it worked. And later on, um, there's a there's a program in my at the high school where I went was that was trying to make sure minorities more minorities get involved in healthcare professions. So they they connected us to all these African American um, physicians, dentists, pharmacists, plastic surgeons, and we shadowed. Sure enough, um, when I went to visit the pharmacy, it was like that feeling was back again that I had when I was a kid. I was like, okay, yeah, this is probably what I want to do. I've been a pharmacist uh, working and graduated and licensed since 95. And the funny story is I had actually, I'd actually talked to a friend of mine, one, another pharmacist that I worked with at the time into doing this, you know, remote, this remote PharmD program and life got in the way. We went to different pharmacies. I, I just couldn't finish it. Actually the DJ stuff kind of went, it, didn't come back into my mind to finish until about 2015. The funny story is I, I was at a doctor's office waiting to see for my annual physical and the same pharmacist that I talked to about finishing the program walks in as the drug rep. <laughs> and he's like, did you ever finish? I'm like, funny you should mention that. I just decided to go back and finish. I made a promise to myself that I would always stay in a competitive situation with, with the pharmacy. I just want to make sure I'm always current and always stay competitive and, and always have the, the proper education that I need to do the job. I had originally enrolled to start in 2006. I got through maybe one semester and then I was like, I can't do all this right now. And luckily I found something that allowed me to manage my time better and the travel for DJ gigs wasn't so insane and I could manage it. There were times when I would dial into a class while I was in Sydney, Australia, for Mardi Gras or something, and it's like the wee hours of the morning the next day. So you had to calculate what time it is tomorrow so that I could sit in on a class. I was able to, by the time I had come back to this program, I wasn't doing, there was a time when I would work every day, almost every day of the week, or three, at least two days a week. At a, I would DJ on the weekends and work at the hospital three days a week. Travel gigs took over, the money got better, and I could do fewer gigs while studying. That's one key thing I would advise somebody, to make sure you keep yourself on a schedule. You, if I can juggle traveling like 10,000 miles away from home, <laughs> and keeping up with, with the coursework and the live action things that we had to do. Um, it's just all about time management. I would say the proudest moment as the pharmacist was realizing that, you know, throughout this whole process, just finishing was the proudest moment for me. I would say, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, you don't know what you don't know. Make friends within the coursework. Make friends in your class. You know, if you're doing it distance learning, still find somebody you can study with and, and help each other through um, understanding things. If you can't get through to someone at the school to help you explain. People can be a good resource if you let them be. If they are able to get an elective program or the training 
before they graduate and do something extra, maybe it will apply towards some continuing education or if you can find a way to make one of your rotations that, if you're really interested in nuclear, those hours will actually count towards what you, what's called an authorized user status. Because when you work in a nuclear pharmacy, you have to have completed a certain amount of hours of coursework and a certain amount of live hours within an actual nuclear pharmacy. You can give yourself that head start. It's good for you and it's good for the employer. But it's pretty much the same test because they're reliable. You know, the tests that are done for each type of exam and diagnostic tool, uh, they haven't needed to improve upon them because they just give them the, the they give them the images that they need. There are there are new drugs coming out that are using unique forms of radiation to help with cer certain tumors and certain um, certain cancers. Uh, that I think that's going to be where the nuclear pharmacy role expands is as they find these new isotopes and how they can use these radioactive isotopes and inject them and that radiation actually does radi you know radi radiation therapy from the inside. I listen to music at work, but that's me, you know, it's not I've I've been pretty conscientious about keeping the DJ world separate from the pharmacy world. I would work with some of the nurses in the chemo pharmacy or at the chemo department in that in the in the oncology department. And one of them was looking at her phone and then she looked up at me and she realized that she had been listening to my podcast for two years and didn't know it was me.